Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to talk a little bit more about the Audacity snafu. We talked about it a little bit a while back where they were purchased by the Muse Music Company and then they tried to push on some telemetry. And then this caused a lot of articles to come up and go, well, they backtracked. No, they didn't. They just changed what they were doing. In fact, I had did a video about this and some people are saying, well, you should wait a few days to see what they do. Well, no, you can't wait a few days. You have to understand that because if you wait a few days, they're gonna think any changes that they make are okay with everybody and they will become permanent. But oftentimes what happens is now companies will push radical changes only to backtrack on some of them and you say, well, at least we got this far. And unfortunately, Audacity first wanted to push telemetry and then they kind of pulled it back a little bit. Only when they pulled it back, quote, a little bit, they actually put more in, <laughs> just under slightly different circumstances. Well, Audacity is back in the news this week because they updated their policy again, and it is still lifted as a draft mode. Nevertheless, this is what they are currently working on, and this is what they're currently trying to do. So you can see that it does, um, it is a draft document. It does not apply to any current Audacity release as these do not include the networking features. The current release is 3.0.2. So if you are using Audacity saying on 3.0.2 for a while will help. Those Debian users, you'll probably be on 3.0.2 or earlier for all eternity anyway. So congratulations on Debian. Arch has taken a big stance against this type of privacy policy, and so they may not be pushing the updates to Audacity. So what they're saying is in the upcoming Audacity releases, the only information sent by default is IP address, which is unavoidable. <laughs> yeah, it's very avoidable. In fact, just don't collect it. But uh, they're collecting your IP address and a user agent string, which gives you the name of the application, the version, the operating system, and the processor. And that alone, your IP address and everything else, that in and of itself is more data than they need to be collecting. Of course, they're saying, well, this is just to make sure everything is working. Well, just spend some time on your user forms. You'll see really quick if anything's working. Trust me. So... This occurs during a check for updates and it can be disabled in preferences at any time. Users also have the option to send error reports. So you can disable the check for updates. So in theory, if you disable that check for updates, they're not going to send any information. Okay, the users ask whether they would like to do so when an error occurs. So you have the option still, even if you're not checking for updates, you have the option to go ahead and um, send an error report if you want, which is going to have a lot of information. I would rather just write about my report on a forum where I have more control over what data is being sent. Also, I'll note that here on Linux, you there, there's no reason for your software to check for updates anyway, because that is all managed by the... Uh, package managers. So it says no other information is collected for any purpose. This can be confirmed in the source code here and here and by the network analysis of binaries. Privacy policy will be amended to state the above more clearly in advance of the next release. Please note that the above information was true before recent media coverage. It has not been changed. This can be confirmed from the source code in our repository and in others. In addition, the only the first three octets of the IP address, for example, were actually being stored in the database and only in a hash form. As of Tuesday, July 6, our team has temporarily disabled server request logging as a precautionary measure to ensure that full IP addresses are not stored there either. No, here's the thing. Do not create a place in your database for it. Don't transmit it. It is very possible to not collect it at all. It's none of your business. Now, that is going to become a little bit more important later on. Here's your privacy notice. So the privacy notice explains, uh, of course, personal data, you, your, notice of sent the rights to relationships for purposes of the notice, WSM group registered with, Oh, in Russia. So that's actually where the data is going, Russia. So is, that, is Audacity now a Russian asset? Is the, um, um, the current uh, powers that be and the government going to call Audacity a Russian asset now? It is collecting and storing data on U.S. citizens. 
It is being collected through the app um, as its data controller. Audacity is responsible for ensuring that processing of personal data complies with applicable data protection law. <laughs> In Russia, that basically says you will collect the data. So it's better to not even have the ability to do it. And then, of course, oh, if you have any questions or comments, contact the Privacy Audacity team. Yeah, here's a qu question for you. Why are you collecting anything at all? You don't have to. So what data do they collect and why? This is where we get some interesting things. Now, uh, is it Hoeg Law, I think, did an absolutely amazing legal analysis of this. Since he is a lawyer and I am not, I will definitely recommend you have a look at that. He compares this privacy policy in relationship to Facebook. Here's what it collects. Uh, app analytics and, and improving our app. The OS version, user country based on OS, the OS name and version, the CPU, non-fatal error codes and message, and i.e. project failed to open, crash reports in brake pad mini dump format. Legal grounds for processing is legitimate interest of WSM group to offer and ensure the proper functioning of the app. Once again, unnecessary. You can check the forums if the app does not work right. Now, the next one is what raised us several pieces of eyebrows. Data necessary, it, this is collection, data necessary for law enforcement, litigation, and authorities requests. Hmm. Uh, legitimate interests of WSM Group to defend its legal rights and interests. So they actually stating that they are collecting some form of data for this. They're just being very unspecified. Now, the Hoeg Law actually went off on a while on this one for minors for very good reason the app we provide is not intended for individuals below the age of 13 if you're under 13 years old please do not use the app the problem is is that audacity is listed under a gpl license which has no restrictions you cannot have a gpl license app and say well you can't use this if you're under 13. Why do they have this in here? Well anything that collects data on anyone under 13 has different sets of laws which is why this is problematic. Who does Audacity share personal data with? Our staff members, you know, AKA Russian agents. I don't know. <laughs> um, we take precautions to allow personal data only to those staff members who have legitimate business to need access and with a contractual prohibition of using it. Yeah, that's right. I have signed a piece of paper that prevents me from using it. Just like, just like the government signing pieces of paper, um, making, you know, shooting people with guns illegal, just completely stops it. Um, you can ask everyone in Chicago and Maryland and you know, things like that. Um, our auditors, advisors, and legal representatives. So the auditors, the advisors, and the legal representatives have access to some of this data. We're interesting and to a potential buyer. The potential buyer, yeah, sure, understand. Again, though, if you say, you know what, we don't keep statistics, um, tell your potential buyer that town pound pavement if they really want to know. How do they protect your privacy? Well, they don't protect your privacy because they're dumping it into a database, which as we have seen is easily hackable and accessible. So even if it's just as something as simple as your IP address and your operating system, that can be information useful to somebody finding information about you. It's better it is not there. They talk about data storage, retention, data transfers, your protection of rights, linking to other websites, updates to the notice. Um, they may update the notice from time to time. Uh, changing legal, technical, or business developments. When we update our notice, we will take appropriate measures to inform you consistent with significant changes we make. We will obtain your consent to any material notice change, and if there is a required uh, by applicable data protection laws, you can see that this notice was last updated by checking the last updated display. There's how to contact them, and then some additional information. So ultimately, it boils down to this. Now Audacity, as in version 3.0.0, Three is going to be starting to collect information by default. It's going to be transmitting that data to a database in Russia. It's going to be storing over there. Now, somewhere in here, there's also um, a notice that they're sharing it with U.S. Te consulting teams and with EU consulting teams as well. So basically, three different countries, uh, three different um, um, jurisdictions already have access to the information that's completely unnecessary and is not being collected now. To sit down and say, well, you know, everyone does this. Well, if everyone jumps off a bridge, that doesn't mean I'm going to follow them like a lemming to my death at the sea. And uh, the fact of the matter is Audacity is the largest open source application to do any form of audio manipulation. So this type of 
This type of data collection is entirely unnecessary. Audacity does not have serious problems. It is well used. It has a lot of people reporting information through forums and whatnot. There is extensive help guides. There is no reason for them to be collecting any form of data at all. I will also note that the Muse group, as a condition to purchasing it, was basically supposed to make sure it's always free and open source. Unfortunately, many people are arguing that this type of data collection goes against the philosophy of free and open source. So, uh, from FOSS Post, Audacity is now a possible spyware. Remove it ASAP. Company Open Audio Source Manipulator uh, Manipulation Program was acquired by a company, Muse Group, two months ago. Same company owners. Uh, owns other projects and portfolios such as Ultimate Guitar and Muse Score. Ever since Audacity has been a heated topic, Parent Company is a multinational company that has been trying to start data collection mechanism in the software. While Audacity is nothing more than a desktop program, its developers want to make it phone home with various data taken from users' machines. They talked about the updated privacy policy, which we went over, um, and it says basically Russia, USA, and EEA zone. All your personal data is stored on our servers in e European economic area. However, we are occasionally required to share your data with main offices in Russia and our external counsel in the USA. So additionally, they state that they might share data with anyone who classifies as third-party advisors or potential buyers. Uh, page contains a shallow attempt to prevent kids under the age of 13 from using the application, which is a violation of the GPL term. Here is that the app was, uh, what is it? The license over which Audacity is released because GPL prevents any restrictions on the usage of the software. The app we provide is not intended for individuals below the age of 13. If you are under 13 years old, please do not use it. Okay, they also talk about the real IP address. Users remain for one day on Audacity servers before they are hashed and since practical user identification is possible. Even if one mentioned governor sends a data request, things should not have been possible with an offline audio editor. The acquiring of Audacity introduced CLA where it requires anyone wishing to send pull requests to the original source to agree on giving them unlimited and unrestricted rights to their own modified lines of code. One would not expect an offline desktop application to be collecting such data, phoning home, and then handing the data to the governments around the world, whereas they see fit. If you want to stay away from such things, then stay away from Audacity. So... Update the developers beyond Audacity shared an announcement that the privacy page was misunderstood due to poor wording and that they will rewrite it to avoid possible confusion. Error reporting and basic system collecting information opt in, but automatic update checking, which sends your IP address, is opt out. So that's a basically there's maybe a little bit of uh, discrepancy here uh, with what is going on. <clears throat> of course, Audacity has said, We're not spyware, we promise. So from Mashable, hopefully, we'll get another Mashable pop up. They refute being spyware after privacy policy update. Some users remain unconvinced. So we can see here's where the updates uh, to this. Uh, I'm recording this on the 9th. You're probably seeing this live for the first time on the 10th. So it's about a week old. Does include, again, information about the operating system version, IP address, and CPU. Uh, privacy policy also states they may collect data necessary for law enforcement, and that really is the part that we do not know. So there is, uh, people have been asking of any uh, alternatives. I have not yet played with Tenacity. I will attempt to. This is a all Audacity fork, no telemetry, crash reports, and other shenanigans like that. So there is something coming up in the works, and what I will like to do soon is play around with this when I have a little bit more time. I want to see, is it going to be uh, compatible with the current mode of doing things? Can we still do, in my case as an author, can we still do the types of things we need for uh, podcasting and for um, audiobook production? So those are going to be important things for me, and uh, we'll kind of see what happens down the road. So uh, there we have it, guys. Uh, there is Audacity. It does appear at this point in time. It's going to be compromised. So finding alternatives that are not compromised would probably be a good thing to do at this point in time. I don't buy that this is, oh, no big deal. It's just misunderstood. No, you're transmitting data to a mothership in Russia and EU and USA um, for no necessary purpose. So yeah, that is a problem. No, I have not misunderstood what you're doing. You don't need to collect such data. 
you have no business collecting such data and audacity at this point in time is compromised. So I will be looking for other alternatives. So there we have it, guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts. And uh, if you've experimented with tenacity or any other alternatives, let us know in the comments down below so we can all go out there and have a look at other options as we see fit. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.